Case Study Number 3 An Airline to Learn From Pan American Airways was the largest international carrier in the United States. It started in 1927, hauling mail from Key West to Cuba, pioneered international travel, and by the late 1940s, employed 19,000 people in 62 countries. Pan Am grew to become the largest airline in the world until 1969, and its creative innovations were the reason behind its growing success. It was the first airline to make reservations on a computer for both flights and hotels. This happened in 1964, when computers were large enough to take up a full floor of an office building. When this company started, there was creativity running in its veins. This airline also revolutionized the use of jets, starting with the Boeing 707 in 1958, when almost everyone else was still using propeller aircraft. Jet-powered aircraft then gave Pan Am incredible ingenuity in terms of market share. It was now able to fly to over 160 countries and serve every continent in the world except Antarctica. It owned a chain of hotels and had cash revenues of millions of dollars in the late 1960s. Things were going right, and culturally, the brand touched the hearts and minds of consumers all over the world. An image of the jet set flying anywhere in the world in the lap of luxury was promoted by Pan Am. It was one of the world's first lifestyle brands. Sure, they flew planes, but what they really did was capture America's earning for adventure. Pan Am made flying a pleasure for the masses, and all it took to participate was the price of a ticket. But soon, things began to falter. What caused that shift, and what can we learn from this particular case of complacency? Let's find out. Complacency sign number three. Paralysis of choice. Paralysis of choice is a complacency trap that I define as having too many options and not choosing one to pursue. In failing to choose a route, you become complacent by default. Paralysis of choice tends to happen to companies and to careers at the height of their success, though not always, because things are going so well and so much creativity is being generated that there are many creative options to consider. But these options are not acted on, and complacency takes over. What ends up happening is that the sheer number of options, even if those options are limited to one or two, leaves the employee or company in a paralysis of choice, an overwhelmed lack of action. Pan Am had paralysis of choice. When competition for routes and integration in the newly deregulated U.S. market was introduced, Pan Am continued to believe that there was no need to change. The option to participate and compete in the new market was there, but there was a shocking and almost numb reaction to that change. What ended up happening? Nothing. Paralysis of choice caused Pan Am to do nothing. Advances in security features were beginning to take hold around the industry after terrorists began to hijack airplanes, many of them Pan Am flights, and kill innocent people. There were companies that scanned baggage, did bag checks, and profiled passengers much as we do today before people board a flight. They had tons of options to enact here and once again claim innovation and creativity leadership but Pan Am was complacent and did nothing to enact a new security policy. Creativity was the very definition of Pan Am when the company started. But just a few years later, in 1991, Pan Am declared bankruptcy, forever relegated to the history books of aviation. What in your career or business has you enacting paralysis of choice and therefore staying stagnant instead of choosing a road? The decorated Civil War Lieutenant General and later President Ulysses S. Grant once said, Anything is better than indecision. We must decide. If I am wrong, 
we shall soon find it out and can do the other thing. But not to decide waste both time and money and may ruin everything. What other road is in front of you now that leaves you overwhelmed by inaction? What options for a path forward are you generating with creativity and not taking? Moreover, what priority can you assign to these actions? The answer lies in being honest and facing your issues head on to see what choices you have in front of you and what you can commit to today, and then deciding what to leave in and what to leave out. It is nonsense to think that your market advantage will last forever or that your customer will buy forever. As we have discussed, the creator mindset sees nothing but a band of time in which your product or service as it exists today will be consumed by receptive and satisfied customers. No more, no less. It is your job to try to extend this bubble or band of time as long as you can even if it stretches beyond the years of your useful working life. When you use creativity, your product, service, or career becomes far more than just commerce. It becomes a cultural moment, a cultural treasure. It becomes a prized entity near and dear to the hearts of users. Your brand becomes a shepherd of cultural goodwill. And how you use that will, with permission from consumers, is scrutinized by an ever more astute and changing consumer base. Over and over, attention and time not dedicated to creativity will hasten your demise because a company that does not continuously breed and develop creativity in all it does is destined to failure. I picked only three companies to profile in this chapter but could have filled entire volumes with case studies of companies that went out of business in those three ways. Complacency and base assumptions on the past, no matter how they manifest, will crush creativity and soon render your career or company to the past. Instead, choose creativity to help you deal with these three complacency flavors because at the end of the day, the answer to all forms of complacency is to keep the creator mindset growing and vibrant and forever keeping up with change. In this growth and vibrancy, there is a chance for a watershed cultural movement that gives your product or service or career, no matter what you do, a chance to become legendary.